Here we go. Okay. So I'll get to that in a second. Let me just go back up really quickly. All right, so we're doing juichi kara juji made. So from 11 to 10. Oh, sorry, 100. Oops. Let's say these together. Juichi. Juni. Ju-san. Ju-yong. Jushi is really, really rare. Nobody says it. Uh, you re very rarely hear Jushi. You don't, it's usually always Ju Yong. Ju Go. Ju Roku. Ju Nana. Ju Shichi is like a vocal car crash. Like, Ju Shichi, right? It, like nobody says it. It's usually always Ju Nana. Ju Hachi. Ju Hachi. What's going on? Oh, there we go. Yeah, you might want to take your earbuds out and stop watching videos, okay? Ju hachi, ju kyu, or ju ku. Doesn't matter. It's up to you. So some people say ju kyu, some people say ju ku. The only ex exception is uh, with age. Usually it's ju kyu sai. So. Japanese at the end of numbers, they'll put sai, and that means age, right? So, watashi wa yonju nana sai desu. How old am I? 47. Exactly. So, let me just ask you guys. Anata wa ju yon sai desu. Anata wa ju go sai desu. Anata wa ju roku sai desu. Okay, let me go back. Raise your hand if you're this age. Anata wa ju yon sai desu. You're 14. Anata wa ju go sai desu. Most of the class. Anata wa ju roku sai desu. Anata wa ju nana sai desu. Anata wa ju hasai desu. Nobody here is 18? Okay. So ju q, and then going up here, again, it's just like Roman numerals. If it's before the tens, it makes it a 10, right? So 210 is 20. Ni ju. Let's say it together. Ni ju. San ju. San ju. What's 33? Sanju, you guys are beautiful. 40, Yonju. It's never Shiju. Never. It's always Yonju. Goju. Lokuju. Nanaju. Shichiju. Exceedingly rare. I don't think I've ever heard it. It's always Nanaju. Hachiju. What's 82? Hachiju ni. Very good. Hachiju ni. 90. Kyuju. Never kuju. Okay. And then finally, last one is hyaku. Very good. And so that's that from 11 to 100. Ju ju ni, ju san, ju go, ju yon, ju go, ju rok, ju nana, ju hachiju, ju kyu. Niju, ni, sanju, yonju, goju, rokuju, nanaju, hachiju, kyuju, kyaku. This pattern continues. So 999. Kyu, hyaku, kyu, ju, kyu. Right? And that continues all the way to infinity. You have a number, the placeholder, and then that, like, so if you say kyu, hyaku, nine hundreds, or nine hundred, right? I can go farther and I can say 99,999. And all of those intermediary words are placeholders. They say, this is a thousand. This is 10,000. So that's how the Japanese counting system works. The highest number you really need to know to go to Japan is 99,999. One reason is because Japanese money 
uh, ends at ten thousand. The ten thousand dollar bill is like the hundred dollar bill in America. One yen is like a penny in America. So a hundred yen is like a right. Um, however, with trade, like that's changed. So we the Japanese uh, currency took a big hit. So let's see. Yeah, it's so bad right now. Yeah, 145.83. So it's a big discount if you go to Japan right now. Usually it's a hundred yen to a dollar, but as you can see here, it's a hundred and forty-five yen to a dollar. So it's if you whatever every dollar you use is like a seventy percent discount. Right. It's not inflation, it's uh, differential between um, currencies. Japanese currency is really weak because they have uh, their debts like two times the size of their government or their uh, economy. Okay, so let's go over this. Um, we've learned this. How do you say it in Japanese? How do you say this? Kore, right? Kore wa nan desu ka? What's this? How do you say what's that? Sore wa nan desu ka? Right? How do you say, what's that way over there? <coughs> are. Are wa nan desu ka? That's not are. Okay, you don't say that like English. It's are. Another note that you want to take. Are. Are. In Japanese is like, huh? Or what? You hear it a lot in anime. Like, maybe the girl misplaces something and she notices she misplaces it and she goes, are. And it's like, huh? So you'll hear that as well in Japanese. So kore, sore, are is part of this system in Japanese called kosoado. It's almost like sing song, right? Kosoado. Okay? And with a lot of these pronouns that show position, ko means this. Or like it's in my area. So, all right, let me write ko. So is like that. Oops. Okay, that's in your area, the person I'm talking to. Ah is far away from both of us, right? And then do is the question word. And what I mean by that is, kore, sore, are, dore, which one, right? Koko, you'll learn this later, koko, here, soko, there, asoko, way over there, doko, where? And so this system you will see throughout Japanese, ko in this way, so in that way, uh, ano in that way over there, and then do, like how is it? Like what do you think? Okay, and so on. So this system, ko, so, a, do, you'll see it a lot with these prepositions where you're talking about here, there, over there. Okay, so kore, sore, are, dore, which one? Okay, so next. Let's say it together, hi. Hi. We already know that one. Now let's be a little bit more formal. Eh. Eh. It's beautiful. Eh. Right? You'll hear this sometimes in very formal situations. They'll say like, Anata wa hotel desu ka? Eh. So this. Yes, that's true. Okay? And then the opposite, e ye. E yet, and then remember it's e, so it's the double e sound e yet, because if it's e yet, it's what house. So if you say e yet, e yet, no house. Okay, and I always I wonder about the hair that the, this person draws. This part's the triple under, like triple underline. I put a star next to it and uh, put a smiley face too. These are extremely important phrases. So if I call the roll and I go, Johnson's on, she goes, hi, and then that's it, right? 
But if I were to ask someone their age, like Zachary, Anata wa juyon sai desu ka? Are you 14? You are, right? So he would say what? Hi. Hi. So this. And what this means is yes, that's correct or yes. It is literally it is that way. You don't even have to say hi. He could just say so this. Or if I was one of his bros and not a teacher, he could just say so which means it's that way. And that's very common in Japanese, soul. They'll just say soul. And soul means, yeah, that's right, okay? But as formal, you know, in formality, hi, so des, hi, so des. Let's practice that together. Hi, so des. Hi, so des. All right. Now the opposite is very long, but I'm gonna teach you a short one that you can use as well. Let's say these slowly, e yet. So dewa Arimasen. This is a really long way of saying no, it's not that way. Okay? Iye so dewa arimasen. Then here, let's say this one together. Iye so ja arimasen. This is the same like ja as jane, right? Well, well, it's not that way. And then finally, the last one that's the kind of cheat, because Japanese, they love to cheat with their language. They will say, oh yeah. Uh, so the disagreement one doesn't matter which one you use? It doesn't. And I'm going to teach you another one, which is, Iye, so, ja, nai, des. And what this is, is Japanese, they love to cheat. When they speak plainly, they'll say, so janai. That's not the way it is. But then you have to make it polite when you talk to normal people. So what do they do? Yes. They stick, they des it. They stick des at the end. And so it's very common that Japanese will say, i yet so janai des. It's not that way. Okay, so janai des. So let's say that together. i yet so janai des. Just rolls right off the tongue. It's not like, i yet so de wa arimasen. That's pretty long. i yet so ja arimasen. This is just, i yet so janai desu. No, it's not that way. So if you get if you get roll call, you just go, hi, or i yet, and that's fine, right? But you wouldn't say i yet, that's kind of weird. But if someone's asking you a question, if is this true? Hi, so desu. I yet so ja arimasen, or I yet so janai desu, or I yet so de wa arimasen. Okay? I would go with the last one just because it's so easy. So janai desu. Okay? I yet so janai desu. So let's say it one more time. Hai so desu. Hai so desu. I yet so janai desu. So if I ask Zachary, I say, Zachary, anata wa. Ju Gosai Deska, he would say Right? And that's perfect. No, that's not true. Okay. And then what would you he say afterwards? Maybe something like Ju Yonsai des. I'm 14. Okay? Or he could say Iye Ju Yonsai des, which means what? No, I'm 14. So don't think of it really like Japanese, it's kind of like Legos, you'll figure it out pretty soon. Like you can pick and move stuff around in the sentence very easily, because all you need is that little particle like wa, and that shows what's, what's happening in the sentence. Okay, so Japanese, they also have these, these things after the numbers that we use in the same way, one page, one pencil or one magic marker, one book. So Japanese have counters after their numbers as well. They're, they're a little bit different though. And this one's really easy to remember because it's ichi page, ni page, san page, yon page, go page. You're just talking about page numbers. But you'll see these counters, ippon, nihon, sanbon. So if something's a long object, they'll use hong. 
ichi mai, ni mai, san mai. With paper, with flat objects, they'll use mai. With animals, like you're counting hamsters. Ipiki, nihiki, sanpiki. That's how you count little animals smaller than like a tiger or something. Yeah, it's kind of weird. They have, uh, it, for birds, ichiwa, niwa, sanwa. That's how you count birds, right? Or rabbits, for some reason. I don't know why rabbits are part of the bird category. Okay. Any questions? I think that might be the end of it. Oh, yeah, they just go over this part here. So let's just say these together. Kore wa nan desu ka? Kore wa u And what we're just showing here is the teachers. Kore wa nan desu ka? Closer to me, so kore. And then the students go, sore wa u That's closer to you, so sore. Okay, notice the second one. Are wa nan desu ka? Are wa ka desu. The reason why is because, let's pretend it's like a little ka thing. It's far away from both of us, right? So, are wa ka desu. Are wa nan desu ka? Are wa ka desu. So usually if somebody uses are with you, they're, they're far away. Uh, it's far away from both of you. Then also here, kore wa o desu ka? Hai so desu. Or those two other variables. Again, they all mean the same thing. Don't freak out. Don't think that you, oh, I have to use one with the, no, you don't. Those three, those three ways of saying no, they apply with anything. Okay. Japanese good luck and bad numbers, like it says, or like I talked about yesterday, in Japanese culture, certain numbers are considered bad luck or good luck, much like 13 in our culture. Bad luck numbers are four, which of course is death, and ku, which is she, uh, or sorry, ku, it comes from ku, like kudo. This symbol right here is the symbol for pain, suffering, distress. It's ku. It's the same ku as not. So it's kind of a negative number for them as well. Yeah. Now, Japanese dialect, they usually don't, the content of what they're saying is not, doesn't really differentiate. It's the way they say it. So, for example, Tokyo, people from Tokyo might say, uh, let me just see if I can give an example. Uh, okay, so say a, a Tokyo person say, Kino, pizza tabeta, I ate pizza yesterday. Okay. Uh, someone from Kyoto might say, Kino, pizza tabehatta. And they put a little ha in there. Osaka people might say, Kino, pizza tabeta, ya. So it's just like a little different way of pronouncing. Okay, eight is considered good luck because of the mountain shape of the kanji character. Now, what's the most luckiest mountain in Japan? Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji. In fact, Japanese have a superstition that when you go to sleep on New Year's, uh, New Year's night, what your dream will foretell the rest of like the year. If it's lucky or not. Do you know what the luckiest thing you can see in your dream? Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji. You know what the second luckiest is? Nope. A hawk or an eagle. It's called taka. You know what the third luckiest thing you can see is? An eggplant. So the like luckiest dream you can have is a hawk carrying an eggplant near Mount Fuji. I don't really know. I guess death. You don't have a dream. I don't know. But they, if, if you ever played like the really old NES Kid Icarus... They have the they have the eggplants everywhere. And it's because it's considered lucky. Because the eggplant is like one of the easiest to cook vegetables. All you do is just pluck it, chop it, and saute it, and it's good to go. Yeah, pretty much. 
Japanese that like New Year's for Japan is like Christmas for us. It's like a big thing. And Japanese they'll get up in the morning and they'll like to see the sun, the first sunrise. They do that a lot. Mountains are re regarded with reverence in Japan, and that is very true. Like because of Shintoism, any big like natural object has usually a shrine on it and usually has some kind of uh, attributes as well. Like I'll show you the mountain that I used to climb a lot was Atago Mountain. And this is like a very close mountain to my house. Like I just took a bus and I'd climb it. This is this mountain right here. It's got a shrine on top of it. And this mountain is known for fire prevention. So when like lightning strikes this mountain, it goes out immediately, at least people think. So, and I've been up here too, to the shrine. There's a huge shrine at the top of this mountain. And uh, so Japanese, they always have shrines on top of mountains, waterfalls. Um, you'll see them like marshes and so on. They'll have like a little shrine there. And that's very common. Pardon me? What does it stand for? What, what, what stands for? Um, the shrine on top of the mountain. It's just to the mountain because there's, they believe that there's a god in the mountain. And Shinto is very life-oriented, whereas Buddhism is very death-oriented. So when you're born and you have kids, your kids, kids grow up to three, three years old, five years old, or seven years old, they take them to the shrine, they get blessed. When you get married, it's Shinto. When you die, Buddhism. All right. And then count from one to 100. We're not going to do that. It's boring. We're going to play a bingo. All right, so can you just tap the little off button?